Hi, Taras Pluskin here. I'm back at the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. And today we are going to be continuing our short little bridge series on lighting in the reef aquarium. Now, last episode, we got to talk about spectrum. And basically, long story short, taking up all the different colors and wavelengths that light can be. And basically, each little wavelength of light, especially in the visible spectrum, is like a different flavor of ice cream and it appeals more towards one particular set of photosynthetic critters over the others. So let's talk about dosing. That's intensity. You know, now that we know what flavor of ice cream we necessarily want or what general spectrum of, of, of flavors that we want, how, what's the portion? How much is the, the absolute right amount of nutrition as far as energy being received through that lighting? Now, Every photosynthetic cell, whether or not it's a cyanobacteria, an algae inside a coral cell, or algae inside of a coral, um, they are all designed basically to absorb kind of a specific intensity of lighting. Think of them like a, a solar array, a battery with a specific capacity. You know, they can operate with a little bit too less than what they need, and they might not get necessarily the, the, the full amount of light that they want, but far worse is it to receive too much light more light than that solar array can possibly operate in. So today, we're gonna to be talking about intensity of light, how we understand it in the reef aquarium industry, and specifically, uh, we're gonna be providing some rough means for being able to quantify it, and some tools for how you, as a reef aquarist, can actually uh, measure the intensity of light in your reef tank, and then take some conscientious decisions, moving corals and adjusting your light's intensity and placement to uh, find that nice sweet spot. That is the, the key to having the coral thrive versus getting too much light and perishing. So for this episode, let's talk about intensity and lighting in the reef aquarium. So let's talk about some metrics when it comes to actually measuring the amount of light being received uh, coming out of our lights. And then more importantly, the amount of light being actually received by the tissues of our corals. Now, Light is a very tricky thing to understand. Niels Bohr, we are not trying to be here, but we're trying to understand all the different quantum layers of light. But quantifying light is actually surprisingly difficult. We have all these different metrics, lumens and, and luxes and foot candles. Uh, but for the most part, um, at least at the TSA farm, we operate in discussing light, um, specifically in the spectrum of PAR, or photosynthetically active radiation. And Within that spectrum, which it kind of ends at the infrared and ends right at the beginning of the ultraviolet, the measurement for light that we really like to operate in is micromoles per square meter per second. So this gives us a rough idea of what our actual measurement will be when it comes to PAR. So we'll refer to PAR readings in a tank where we take something like a photometer, like this one made by Apogee, and it will actually uh, be able to receive and measure the light coming out of our lights and wherever that light is hitting in that particular position. And it will measure that intensity, the moles per square meter per second. And it's because of this standardization of PAR, these readings that we can reduce down to micromoles per square meter per second, that a kind of a common tongue has been established in the reef aquarium industry as far as which PAR readings are recommended for general groups of coral. So um, let's demonstrate this really quickly with this PAR meter that we use here at the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. Now, this is a tool like any other, and the performance that you get out of it is really kind of behooving how you deliver the tool and how you use it. So we're going to be briefly kind of taking some rough measurements here. An important thing to realize is that every measurement you take out of a device like this needs to be taken with a slight grain of salt. So there's a whole myriad of factors which affect the actual number that's going to come on the screen as I move this probe around the aquarium. We're not so much going to be too crazy about hitting a specific number, but more or less entertaining the general appropriate range for the coral we're dealing with. So without further ado, let's take some quick uh, rough measurements on this tank of El Chapo here, and we're going to be uh, doing a quick comparison as we go from the top layer of this array down to the median layer, and then we'll go down to the bottom of the tank itself, and we're going to see kind of roughly what kind of par we're dealing with coming out of uh, these radions right here. So, so we're going to take our probe, and we're going to put it down roughly parallel to where our coral is going to be, and then we'll have a changing uh, 
meter on this scale here, and we'll be able to tell kind of roughly the range of light that the coral's being exposed to. So we can see here, all around here, these mini colonies and these frags are all receiving kind of a median level of 150 to upwards of 300 par of light. Now, if I move the angle of the probe, we can see kind of dramatically how this PAR reading can really shift and change. It's a variety of different factors that can affect this reading, how cloudy your water is, how much shimmer and movement's going on at the surface. So all the more reason it's more important to pay attention to a general number versus kind of uh, being too, too, too obsessed with getting a specific particular PAR reading at any particular position. Now, if we move down to a middle range of the tank here, we're now towards more LPS. We got some gonoporas down here, and we can see that we've already automatically gone down by almost a factor of a half. Now, sometimes the probe will be shaded by the acros at the top, but if we go over to a more exposed area over here, we can see that we're still getting about 100 to 150 tops par when it comes to these LPS, this middle range of the tank. Now, as we go towards the bottom of the aquarium, we're really more catering towards lower light levels of corals. Every inch of water you go down will attenuate more and more light. So for this reason, it's far more common to have LPS and especially soft corals, such as this green star polyp and the like, at the bottom of the aquarium where they're receiving relatively low light levels. Um, but it should also be noted that there are still definitely pockets in the aquarium at the bottom levels that don't receive the direct shading that let's say some of the middle layers receive. And therefore, there is the possibility of having higher levels of PAR on an exposed sand bed. Now, conversely, there are many different pockets that exist in and amongst the rock work, in the caves, and at different angles where we can kind of explore with the probe how every single, let's say the surface of the green star polyp can be receiving well over 100 par, yet some of these angles where we're still having active good growth is receiving about 30 or 50. Now, if a coral's not doing well, and we find that it's maybe receiving more light than is necessarily generally recommended for that particular species or strain, what are some things that we can do? Well, one is that we can move the coral. If the coral needs to receive more light, we can raise it up higher in the aquarium and the rock work. If it's receiving too much light, we can partially shade it. We can drop it lower towards the bottom of the aquarium. We can also increase the height and droppage of the lights itself to kind of increase the spread, increase or reduce that intensity of light. Many of these lights that we use in the reef aquarium industry today are actually LEDs and highly adjustable in their range of not only spectrum, but intensity as well. So by using those three factors, we can really adjust the specific light intensity being received by every individual coral in our aquarium. So in conclusion, it's important to realize that every single coral in our aquarium is nothing but a giant array of living batteries, living photosynthetic cells that are all adapted to pretty much accept kind of a specific Goldilocks sweet spot of light intensity, where once they achieve that magic range, they really will thrive and therefore make the corals that they support thrive and be beautiful as well. We'd love to talk about light more, but that's all we're willing to partake in today. We look forward to seeing you next time as we talk about photo period with light, how light changes and how we in the aquarium industry can simulate the changing difference of light intensity and spectrum, kind of simulating the dusk and dawn cycles that these organisms have adapted to in the wild. I'd like to end this episode with a question. Have you ever taken PAR readings in your tank? Have you found that the appropriate recommended PAR ranges have worked for you? Has there ever been situations where you've had to turn up or turn down the intensity of your lights, change the maneuvering of your corals, or change the position of your lighting to get better success? We look forward to hearing from you in the comments, and we will see you next time to talk about photo period.